could have just straight out lecture on it. In fact, I think I did. <laughs> but you know, if that was sufficient, and if uh, I wanted to just leave things there, there wouldn't be such a thing as a tutorial question. So, um, so, so let me just uh, work through this question uh, in case you know all this formalistic math and other stuff for uh, leaving you at a loss. Um, this is my opportunity to kind of work through, give a model answer um, of what I what I thought someone encountering this material for the first time uh, might say. So, so, uh, so I'll be reading some of these long texts just out loud um, because I think that fits the theme here. So um, it starts out with the introduction. It says that energy and momentum forms a four vector. And outside of the lecture that I've already done, this might be an entirely new information in two senses. One, <laughs> what is a four vector? Your textbook doesn't really cover that. I do lecture on it. You have some written notes, but it's uh, extra textbook material. So what is the four vector? That's one. And two, the fact that energy and momentum do form a four vector. So, so starting out with that, it's meant to be a reminder of the lecture videos that you have seen. And um, so with that, it says transforming under a change of inertial reference frame, the same way space-time coordinates do. That is if a frame as prime is moving at some speed, beta c, in some direction, uh, in the positive x direction, relative to frame s, then space-time coordinates transform in the following way, gamma being defined the usual way. And, and when I say um, these form a uh, four vector, it's an implicit reference to this uh, invariant interval that, uh, that is actually covered in the textbook. The, um, it's, uh, this is the reminder of the invariant interval that you will have seen from the textbook that um, this ds squared, uh, which is uh, formed in this very specific way, the space, I'm sorry, time coordinate squared. Um, so it will be c times uh, ds. So I'm going to use dt notation, time co coordinate, time interval squared minus the space interval um, squared, or I guess the easiest way to write this down in a kind of vector notation would be the x vector dot product with itself. That this is an invariant interval. And by invariant, we mean that um, this particular combination, whether you express it in one coordinate axis you know, in frame S, that's what unprimed uh, indicates, or whether you express, the, express it in frame S prime uh, with the primed coordinates, that this particular combination, when you finish doing the calculation, it'll come out the same way. That's what invariant uh, means. And the when we put together something as a vector quantity, what we are interested in is both the properties and how they transform, and as they transform, what remains unchanging. In case of uh, regular space geometry with uh, you know, three vectors, the thing that didn't change was the length of the vector. And with the space-time four vector, there's a kind of a length that's uh, defined and specified this way. So, with that, when it says, similarly, energy and momentum transform in this way. So I'm giving you the Lorentz transformation here. And um, in the tutorial exercise below, you will see that an invariant quantity like this exists for, um, for energy and momentum for vector as well. And that, that, that existence is crucial for us to call that, say that energy and momentum forms a four vector. If they didn't, then we shouldn't say that. So, um, so the rest is the tutorial. In below exercises, we'll see how this new revelation is consistent with the expressions for relativistic energy, E is equal to gamma mc squared, and relativistic momentum. The momentum is given by gamma mb. 
So um, do I want a copy of this? Uh, I think uh, well, I have Lawrence transformation memorized, so I'll just write it down as needed. So A, it says, consider a particle of mass M at rest in frame S. Its energy and its X component of momentum are given this way. So let me start writing that down so that I can uh, write down transformation rule. Um, I, I think I'm going to use the matrix notation of Lorentz transformation. So let me write down my energy momentum four vector in frame S as a column vector here. So this is my the energy momentum four vector with just the first two components. They would be the energy component and the, or energy over C <laughs> and the momentum component. So the energy component would look like uh, MC squared divided by C, so just MC. Uh, momentum component would, uh, yeah, would be zero. And uh, I'm choosing not to write down the Y and Z coordinates since nothing interesting happens there. Um, it asks, what is its energy and X component of momentum in frame S prime? Uh, give your answer in terms of M, gamma, beta, and C. Yeah. Now, let me, I'm scrolling up to verify that S prime frame is moving to right at that speed, okay. So I want to make sure I get certain things right. So part A is describing a particle of mass M at rest. So this is the description in frame S. Um, where the particle is at rest. Now I have to keep in mind that my S prime frame is the frame that's moving to right at speed uh, beta c. So I'm when I'm trying to describe the coordinates or the properties of this particle from the S prime coordinate, I have to imagine maybe um, uh, sitting in a car that's moving relative to this particle in the positive x direction. So that's what I should have in mind. Now with that, the Lorentz transformation, so, so with that, uh, I can actually give one, so with that you know, for intuition, I can actually just give an answer here because I can kind of see over here, then in S prime frame, this particle will actually be moving to left with the speed beta c. So um, I could easily just say my E prime is equal to uh, gamma MC squared, where gamma is given by one over square root of one minus beta squared. And uh, the momentum is where I would have to be careful. It would be minus gamma M beta C and gamma MB where V is written as a beta C. So, so, you know, I can give the answer that way and that'll be correct. <laughs> um, if you did it that way, great, <laughs> good job. Now, I want to give a slight alternate presentation which uses the fact that momentum, energy and momentum form a four vector and you can use Lorentz transformation. So if I'm just using Lorentz transformation, this is what I would do. I would take my momentum in the S frame, multiply that with, or the, apply the Lorentz transformation. <laughs> if I express it as a, a matrix product, it looks like a gamma minus gamma beta minus gamma beta gamma. You can uh, verify for yourself that this product gives you the transformation that's described here. And I think I have a lecture on that. So with the product, I will get uh, my sp space, well, it is the space time coordinates. I'll get my coordinates for the S prime frame. So uh, when I do this matrix product, again, you don't really have to do it with the matrix product. I'm just cho choosing to do it that way. So for the um, row one, column one here, I take the row one of the this square matrix and then multiply it element by element with the column one of the second uh, vector or matrix and um, add all the products together. So it's a gamma times MC plus minus gamma beta times zero. That's zero. So my energy component is gamma uh, MC. And I remember that's a 
uh, energy divided by C. So when I plug in the answer here, I should have C squared there, put in the right factors of C. And for my second row, first column here, I take the second row of the square matrix and multiply it to the first column of the second matrix or vector. So it's gonna be minus gamma beta times MC. So minus gamma M beta C, I swap the orders around a little. Um, times gamma plus gamma times zero, which is zero. So, so these are the components for energy over C and momentum in the X direction. So you can, um, I guess, energy prime and momentum prime. So, and that's what you see here. It, whether you get it get at it through your intuition about shifting this of these different frames and your memory of the relative stick energy and momentum, you can use that. You can also use Lorentz transformation. Both of them yield the same answer in the end. Okay, so with that, uh, part B, it says, consider a particle of mass M moving in plus X direction as P the beta C in frame S. All right, so it's uh, describing something different here. Oh, I guess, uh, let me do it this way. I'm just gonna move this uh, writing um, down. And so I will change this drawing from part A as I <laughs> work through the situation in part B. It says, consider a particle of mass M. So it's still the same particle. Oh, but it's saying now it's moving in plus X direction at some speed. So I have to, uh, let me make some room here. I have to describe this mass as moving to right in the plus X direction with the given speed, beta c. What is its energy and x component of momentum in frame s? All right, that seems easy enough. I remember my relativistic momentum and energy formula. So energy should simply be gamma mc squared. And the momentum should be gamma mv and velocity is beta c. So. So that should be the answer. I don't think it's meant to be a trick question. That's just a, so this is just a simple relative state and energy and momentum in this frame where the movement was specified and that's it. Now, what, um, what we are verifying now is that, so in the S prime frame, which is moving to right with the speed of beta C, now in this frame, we should now see this particle as being at rest since it's moving at the same speed as my car. So what I would like to um, verify is that in S prime frame, that it does look like a particle at rest. Now, if you are simply putting in the uh, expression for a particle at rest, you could put in mc squared and zero. And I think this is why I have this instruction. Leave your answer as uh, in terms of gamma and beta so that, um, so that you won't do this. Because <laughs> um, I want you to really go through the Lorentz transformation and see the answer that you get is really consistent with the answer for a particle at rest, which would be mc squared and zero. And let's see if that is the case. So, uh, so I need to change these values here. Uh, my momentum in frame S now is, my four momentum in frame S is not mc and zero, it's a gamma mc. Okay, I'm remembering I'm dividing by C here. So gamma mc, uh, momentum is gamma m beta c. And, oh, I think I need a slight more space for my left-hand side so that, because now I uh, have more than one term that won't disappear. So, so I'm applying the Lorentz transformation by doing this matrix product here and that'll get me my uh, value of the, the momentum four vector in the S prime frame. So I'll just chug through the algebra here. Uh, gamma times gamma MC, that's a gamma squared MC. 
uh, minus gamma beta times gamma and beta c. So that's going to be minus gamma squared beta squared and then mc. Okay, that's my first row. And for my second row, I do the same calculation, minus gamma beta times gamma mc. So that's a... Uh, um, Did I lose a beta? Well, we'll see. Minus gamma squared beta mc, okay. Gamma times gamma and beta c, oh, plus gamma squared and beta c. Here, you can see that this exactly cancels out that. So that's got to be zero. Um, so that's zero. You could put in this, but you know that's an algebraic expression that literally is a zero, so, um, so that wouldn't really change. And this expression here, when you simplify it here, you can see more easily that it is really equal to mc squared. So when I simplify this, this is what I get. I can factor out. Um, I can factor out mc to the right, and let me factor out gamma squared to the left. Uh, the order doesn't matter, it's a, for the purpose of organizing my expression. So gamma squared, factor it out to the left, and I'm going to factor out mc to the right. And what remains not factored out is 1 from the first term and beta squared from the second term, 1 minus beta squared. And this is what this instruction was getting at, that Yes, this combination here is equal to one. So, um, so when you actually get the expression for energy by multiplying this through by C, because remembering this, then, um, then yes, that is equal to mc squared. But for the purpose of entering the answer here, you should enter it as gamma squared one minus beta squared mc. So, so that's what the that's the tutorial part uh, for you to see that uh, you can apply this Lorentz transformation to given um, the four momentum coordinates of a particle, and when you apply Lorentz transformation, you get the results that you expect to get. That's the tutorial in A through C, and in part D, it's uh, what I led this uh, exercise with that. The, the thing about calling something for vector, it's uh, an implicit reference to this the, the Lorentz invariant. This is the property of the geometry of space-time. So there should be a similar um, uh, invariant. In th There should be a similar invariant. So I think this is the most uh, kind of complicated expression. So let me read it out loud and then I'll make sure that I do the correct thing. So it says, if we energy and momentum from a four vector by geometry of space time, there should be a quantity like invariant interval for space time coordinates. Use the expression for E. Oh, I think there was a prime there that got obscured. Yeah, E prime and uh, px prime in a to confirm that this will give the same value as um yeah i think uh, the reason for this particular set of instruction was if you look back at a so a gave the energy energy and momentum coordinates in frame s and it's uh, really easy to compute this. The, the time coordinate squared minus the space coordinate squared in frame S because in the moment, for the momentum, it was already zero. So uh, for the time coordinate, you get uh, this thing, which is, turns out, um, you know, it's really easy to calculate. So the part that I'm asking you to fill in is the second part. That which is that when you do this exact same calculation, but using the prime the coordinates, that the end result you get will still be equal to this quantity here. That's what I'm asking you to do. So, so let's do that. Um, I have this expression that I got somehow. Let me just copy that over. This is my energy and uh, momentum coordinates. So, so these were the 
the E prime and P prime coordinate, E prime, it's E prime divided by C that I should work with. So let me just get rid of this two here and my P prime coordinate. So all that remains to do is just to work through this algebra. Um, I'll take the first quantity, square it, calculate minus uh, the second quantity squared. We'll see what we get. So, um, so the, so the, the first thing, e prime over c squared is gonna be uh, gamma squared m squared c squared. And just taking this and squaring it um, minus p prime squared. So take this. So I have this minus sign, which will you know cancel itself out. So I'll get uh, plus gamma squared and squared beta squared c squared. Okay, let me simplify it. Um, I guess the thing to do to simplify it is to factor out gamma squared and factor out m squared c squared, m squared c squared. So I'll factor out gamma squared to the left and you know, which side you do doesn't really matter. This is more for organizing and recognizing familiar terms. So gamma squared factored out and m squared c squared factored out. And what remains is one from the first term minus this minus sign beta squared from the second term. So, and this is where, again, I am saying that recognize that this gamma squared one minus beta squared is equal to one. But for the uh, purpose of this answer, I do want you to just, uh, you know, put it as <laughs> gamma squared one minus beta squared. Um, so that I can see that you went through this calculation rather than you know putting in as a answer what you know to be the answer here, m squared c squared. This is the purpose of tutorial to reinforce something that you already know or, or something that you would already know from the lecture. Um, one thing I did, uh, uh, a change I made. Um, so because you know these instructions are kind of length and sometimes confusing. Uh, I think if you somehow use the quantities in B and or C, you will have arrived at a slightly different looking answer. Uh, basically, you know, you would have this thing squared. So, you know, gamma to the fourth power and so on. And, you know, in the real world where there's this identity, um, it, that difference doesn't make any difference, but um, for the purpose of this uh, tutorial question, since I'm not recognizing this identity, I programmed in as uh, possible answers, uh, both uh, this answer here and uh, one with uh, the square of these coefficients. So both of the answers should be treated as correct when it's grading, but the intended correct answer is what you see here. So a uh, closing note for this tutorial, you know, as you look at your answers, verify that the expressions given by the Lorentz transformation um, agrees with what you would have obtained without the Lorentz transformation. And the, this is Lorentz transformation of four vector. It, it's useful in doing more difficult relativistic dynamics questions, uh, some of which I have written myself from more uh, realistic real world examples. So, um, so, so I hope uh, going through the tutorial helps um, um, helps to set up your uh, framework for solving some of the relativistic dynamics questions.